You know, we all know that we are moving from a very, very industrial economy to a knowledge economy, to a creative economy. But what does this really mean? How do we learn to prepare for this new economy? The first thing we need to figure out is we need to create a community of people, people that are sitting right here, to open up our imagination and then turn our imagination into impact. Now, even wa that, what does that mean? I have a confession to make. I worked at Intel for many years, and I'm from India. So the only two ways I know how to learn is either through acronyms or through stories. That's it. I can't learn any other way. So I thought I will subject you to the way I learn. So apps. Everybody has apps these days. There's an app for waking up, app for sleeping, app for everything. But let me tell you my definition of apps. You know, in Indian mythology, or in Indian uh, philosophy, we say that there are four stages of life. There's childhood, youth, an age where you're responsible, you're head of the household, and then ultimately nirvana, you know, you retire and then you make your final journey. <clears throat> so if you think of what does each of this age entail? So the first thing is, in the app, is, in the A is ask. What does a child do all the time? They keep asking, why is the sky blue? Why are we going there? Why are we not going there? Are we there yet? Why, 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 why? They keep asking because that's the way they learn. And the next thing is practice. You know, a kid gets up, walks, falls down, gets up, walks, falls down, and that's how they learn, is we need to practice our ideas over and over and over again. And then we have to become the head of the household. We have to figure out how our ideas are going to actually create an impact out there and make a profit so that we have the whole world sustainable around us. And finally, the S is the most important part of this, is that every learning has a stage when you need to surrender to the next generation, because otherwise you will never let someone else come. And when I say next generation, I don't mean somebody younger necessarily, but maybe the next person who's been working with you. So you need to know when to complete that. So in these apps, you know, we ask, we practice, we create a profit, we surrender. Now, in the past, we used to do this only once in our lifetime. Then, maybe in my generation, we did three or four times. But in the new generation that's coming out, including all of us who's here, who's planning to live for another 20, 30 years, we better learn how to do this over and over and over again. So, there is a circle there with no particular arrows because it's an infinite do loop. We have to ask, we have to practice, we have to profit from it, we have to surrender ourselves, go on to the new idea. And this is a paradigm of the new generation, of the new economy, is that we have to learn to let go and keep on. <clears throat> and to remember this, I'll tell you one quick story. There's a movie called Six Degrees of Separation, which is one of my favorite movies. And in that, you know, Donald Sutherland is telling the story of his teacher of his child. He says, I go to my child's school and I ask the teacher, what is it about you? Look at the paintings of the second grade. They are blotches of black and blue. Look at the paintings of the fourth grade. They are, you can't even understand. But the third grade, every painting is a Picasso. What is your secret? Let me learn with you. And the teacher says, I just know when to take the painting away from them. So, knowing when to give up is the most best skill we need to learn. Now, the second thing is, this, this is Taiwan, this is a country of manufacturing. When I say bomb, what do people think? They think of bill of materials, right? But I'm going to give you a different definition of it after I tell you a few quick stories. <clears throat> Bill of Materials says, what is the content of things? What is in something? I want to introduce you to a few people who truly are my heroes. I mean, these are the heroes of the new generation. This boy, Sushant Patnaik, when he was about 15 years old, he went to the hospital and saw someone who's paraplegic. 
and felt really bad about that person not being able to move. So he figured out what is common between him and a person who cannot move is breath. So he created a wheelchair that moves through breath when he was age 17. And since then, he's all of 20 right now. And he has already invented, you can make cell phone calls using breath. You can turn lights on and off using breath. So he's dedicated to this idea. And this is Nam Do, who runs a company called Emotive. And what this is, is that by thinking something, you can move objects on a screen. So what is the power of our thinking in making things happen in the physical world? Arunachalam, he is a sixth grade fail, and he was sitting in his house one day and he saw that his wife was using rags when she had her periods. And he decided to invent a sanitary napkin that is affordable for women so that over 90% of the women in India and around the world who cannot afford to buy a sanitary napkin would be able to use his invention. And to do that, he had to sacrifice a lot of things because people thought he was weird. First of all, a guy trying to do this was weird enough. So when he couldn't find anybody to experiment to find out if his sanitary napkin is working or not, he actually wore it. And he took pig's blood and he connected it to the sanitary napkin. He'd be riding bike, he'd be walking everywhere, pumping this to test how this works. I mean, it takes guts to do this for a man from a small town. Elora Hardy is building homes out of bamboos, not just any homes, luxury homes out of bamboo. Mansukh Bhai, he has created a refrigerator that runs through water that does not require electricity, that keeps food cold for at least two to three days. And Myra Kalman, who is an illustrator with The New Yorker, who's a children's book artist, and Todd Markover, who's a music composer, who's creating symphony of cities. He collects sounds of the cities and creates symphonies out of them. And the reason I'm talking about all these people is that in my mind, the BOM actually stands for Billionaires of Moments. And one of my favorite quotes is that, life ought not to be measured by the number of breaths we take, but by the number of moments that take our breath away. So each of these persons that I talk to you about is creating a world where there are many, many precious moments that are collected for the people around them. That's the billionaires that we all should aim to become. We should be greedy about collecting these moments. And finally, when we do this, when we do these crazy things, when we do these out-of-box things, when we do these things that nobody believes in, there are times you wonder, why am I doing this? You know, there was a time when I used to love climbing mountains. So in the middle of the night, you know, you're up in some snow mountain and it's cold as hell. And you're thinking of, what the heck am I doing here? You know, and then you go down and then like an idiot next weekend again, you're back up again. So what is this craziness that makes us all move? It is this word I want you to remember, one, e, ache, any language, one. We should always think of one person or one incident, something in our life that makes us go forward. And to me, it's this girl. I call her my flower girl. And I met her about five years ago. And uh, she is in a home where res which rescues sex workers. And she was one of the girls that was rescued. She was about six years old when she was rescued. And she brought home and she was taken care of. And then, um, you know, she, she was mentally uh, uh, challenged. So they put her in a home and they found out two years later, that in that home, she's being abused again. So they brought her back to the home, and Sunita Krishnan, who runs this organization, spoke in a conference just like this in India at TED, and she shared her story about how difficult it is to create a home for women like this, who they rescue, because no one wants them living in their neighborhood. And just like you, there were people sitting in the audience, they got up, and we actually worked with her for six months and we got her enough money to build a home 
for all the women so that 18 months from the time she stood and shared her story, there was a home where all these women were living. And to me, I felt that this girl, this face, is what haunted me. I felt I wanted to give her a home at least for one day where she was happy. And they built the home and pretty soon after that, she died. Because at age nine or 10, by the time she was rescued for the second time, her body was ravaged with so much disease that she could not survive anymore. But to me, every time I think of the crazy things that we do, every time I think of all these billionaires of moments we are trying to create, every time we are sitting here biting our nails wondering if we are ever going to make it through the year, and every time when I wonder, should I just go back and get a job, I just think of this face, and I think of the story with which I'm going to end. And the story is of a little boy and starfish. And this boy goes to the beach, and there's millions of starfish out there. And this boy is taking each starfish and putting it back into the ocean. And then the waves come and wash a few more starfish, and he keeps doing it. Finally, an adult who's watching all this, you know, somebody smart like one of us, goes to the child and says, why are you doing this? Why are you putting each? Because they're just going to come right back again. Only few of them really make it. So why do you want to spend all your day doing this? He says, yes, a lot of them may wash up, but for the one starfish that makes it, I made a difference. So the world may or may not be available to you, but to one person, you may be the world. And let that person be your guiding line as guiding light as you get to be billionaires of moments. Thank you.